Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele. There's a lot to cover in our prayer time today. We only have 45 minutes. We're going to be doing a lot of praying for healing, but we're going to open our time with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for another day. And this is your day, and we're going to rejoice and be glad. Now, Lord, we thank you for all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to do a couple of songs throughout this prayer time. We're going to start off with the faithfulness of God. Faithful one, so unchanging. Jesus, one, you're my rock of peace. Lord of all, I depend on you. I call out to you. We started off our time together with some worship. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's basically, you know, when I first was a, a young pastor and I was trying to put together my prayer life, my Bible reading, and also as well my worship, I started off by saying, okay, this half hour belongs to you. And it was a starting point for me. Of course, now it is much easier for me to spend time in prayer. I have many different facets in which I can do it. I have, like, for example, we are going to be doing what I call unscripted prayer. But I also have, you know, prayer books that uh, I would use, for example, in my uh, time of prayer, where I will actually read scripted prayers. But in those days, what I would do when I was just starting off as a young pastor, I mean, I wasn't very old. I was still under the age of 30 when I was doing all of this and experimenting this situation. You see, you know, in those first years, I was involved with, you know, going off to uh, broadcast school and then Bible college and then going, launching into the ministry as a youth pastor and then going into my own first church in a small community and trying to build it up and raise a young family. Well, it was during those years that I said, I need to spend time with God. And it was very difficult to get something together. So I said, what we're going to do is we're going to increment three different 
uh, areas. So I would start off with, you know, singing songs of praise and worship. I'm blessed because of the fact that I can play a musical instrument and that happens. Then I would read the word of God for 10 minutes and then I would pray for 10 minutes. That gave me structure and it gave me discipline. And every day I knew that I had half an hour alone with God, that God was going I was going to use the worship as a launching pad, that I would read the word of God, and then I would pray. Well, of course, nowadays, prayer is a, it's a joy to be able to pray. It's a, a privilege to be able to pray. And that's why I enjoy these online prayer times with you, that we can learn together. Now, today, we're going to be talking about healing and every aspect of healing. And I'm going to give you seven scriptures from the book of Isaiah, and we're going to implement them into our prayer time today. I actually did this as well on the Facebook Live uh, time that I had today, and I want to use it as a launching pad. Sometimes you need some structure. And uh, many times I come into these prayer times and I, I know it's totally unstructured, it's totally unscripted, but today I decided to use an outline to have a plan of prayer. Now, I, I don't know exactly how it's going to be, you know, structured when it came to what I'm going to pray because I do want to have the liberty and the freedom in the Holy Spirit to guide this prayer time. So the scripture that we're looking at today is Isaiah, we got seven of them. So the first one is Isaiah 40, 29. And it says simply this, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. You see, when we feel exhausted, God provides the strength that we need to carry on. This verse also reminds us that his power is available. So Father, today, we're so grateful, absolutely grateful. That, Lord, when we are weary, when we get tired of doing well doing, Lord, we know that we're just one step away from victory. We're one step away of becoming an overcomer, being undefeated, and also, Lord, as well, being more than a conqueror. But, Lord, it's in that middle time. Lord, I remember many, many times when I would do long distance running. And there would be that time in the middle of the run where everything was just hurting and I was out of breath. And then, Lord, I was waiting for what we call the second win. It's the same way, Lord, when I started playing hockey or doing other types of physical activity. I was tired. But then all of a sudden, the second wind would carry in. And then all of a sudden, I would have that strength, Lord, to finish the race, to be able to finish the game, whether it was hockey or soccer or some other particular game. You said that, Lord, you'd give strength to the weary and increase the power of the weak. Lord, today, what we want to see happen, Lord, right now, is that resurrection power, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, would you right now, <coughs> excuse me, come into our life situation? Would you bring that overcoming power? Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Lord, would you increase that right now? Would you bring that Holy Ghost resurrection power into our life situation? especially when we feel weak, especially, Lord, when we are weary. Lord, help us to recognize that there are times where we need to rest, but that doesn't mean that, Lord, we give up. Lord, they used to have a way stations in the ancient times, Lord, places where people could stay, where they could rest on their journey to wherever they were that they were going. Lord, that's what we want to see happen as well. We want to see, Lord, that victory right now 
in the name of Jesus. And we want to see a breakthrough, Lord, in this area. Now, Father, for those that are just about ready to give up, for those that, Lord, are feeling overwhelmed, Lord, this is that moment of you're going to bring that healing power. You're going to give them, Lord, that strength that they need when they're weary. You're going to give them, Lord, that power when they feel weak. And they're going to be able to say like Paul, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Lord, the next scripture that we want to apply today is Isaiah 58, verse number 11. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land. He will strengthen you, your frame. He will, you will become like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose water never fails. Lord, we know that this is that offer of assurance and help, Lord. That, Lord, you'll guide us through the difficult times, providing for our needs and refreshing us with your constant presence. So, Father, today, I take that wonderful promise, and I also implement, Lord, that other promise found in Matthew chapter 28, verse number 20, where you were just about ready to head up into your ascension. And then you reminded your disciples, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Lord, we need that assurance sometimes. Lord, sometimes we feel like we have are in that sun-scorched land. Everything's dry. Everything, Lord, is baked out. We have nothing left. But that's when you said you'll strengthen our frame. That very foundation, that very thing that will carry us, Lord. Now, we know that, Lord, we have all a skeleton inside of us. And, Lord, that is the strength. That is the structure of our body. And, Lord, it enables us, Lord, to move around. It enables us, Lord, to go where we need to go, to do what we need to do. Lord, Today, would you strengthen our frame? Would you strengthen our superstructure? Lord, we are choosing right now to sink our wonderful spiritual pipe into those waters of salvation. And you said, in that day, shall we say, praise the Lord. Father, would you right now, Lord, make us a well-watered garden? Would you, Lord, make us a spring where the water never fails. Father, that's what we're praying for today. That's what we're standing in right now at this time, because we know that, Lord, only you can do that. Lord, we need that outer, you know, and I love the illustration of Jesus down by the well of Sychar, where he is sitting or literally sitting on the well, and the Samaritan woman comes to him and he says to her, give me something to drink. Uh, and she looked at him and she says, you're a Jew. You're speaking to me, a Samaritan woman. And of course, she came at noon because nobody was around and she could get her water without any type of prejudice or bias against her. And Jesus said to her, the water that I give you'll never have to thirst again. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you that, Lord, in those thirsty times, and, and I love what Jesus said. He said, blessed are the hungry and thirsty, for they shall be filled. Father, that's what Revelation chapter 22 says. All that are thirsty, come. Lord, we're sending out a call today in the spiritual realm and in the natural realm. That, Father, people are going to come. They're going to be, Lord, today wonderfully uh, satisfying our needs. Lord, it doesn't matter what our need is. Physical, spiritual, emotional, intellectual, financial, or family. We can come to you today with confidence. Knowing that, Lord, you can do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what we're able to ask or even imagine. Lord, today, would you provide for our needs? Would you, Lord, right now, 
take those needs and supply according to your riches and glory. And Lord, today as well, would you refresh us with your constant presence? I, I love what Moses said when he was talking to the Lord. He said, Lord, listen, if you do not go for us, if your presence doesn't go before us, we're not going. Lord, I pray that that would be the desire of our hearts. Lord, that throughout this day, and Lord, also throughout this week, uh, wherever we find ourselves, Lord, that we would want to do the will of our Father, and that we would want, Lord, today to make sure that we are in constant contact with you, and that, Lord, we would be connected with you. We would be like that spiritual pipe. Lord, that we would be like that extension cord that is plugged into the power. That's what we pray for today. Then, Lord, I think of today Isaiah 41, 13, which is, of course, a re-emphasis, Lord, of Isaiah 41, 10. In fact, Isaiah 41 is a wonderful chapter on how that, Lord, we can, we can overcome the fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. Lord, thank you for that today. Thank you that, Lord, this is that moment that, Lord, you are going to do, you're going to be with us. And it says, I am the Lord your God who takes you by your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Lord, when we feel overwhelmed and fearful, your promise is that you're going to take a hold of our hand, you're going to lead us through the darkness, and that your help is always near. Lord, that's such a, a wonderful, wonderful promise today. You know, it was Ezra who said in Psalm 119, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Father, thank you today for that wonderful promise that, Lord, you are going to be with us. You're actually going to take us by the hand. Lord, I was thinking of my son, Robert. And when I used to pick him up, when they were living in the community of Capilano to take him to work in St. Albert. I remember last year when he was taking his daughter, Sarah, and she would be getting on the bus in the morning and we would pull up and there he would be taking her by the hand. She would be walking with him. They would be very quickly walking towards us and towards the bus. And he would have her in the hand because he knew that because of her disposition, if she wasn't escorted, she would run ahead or run this way or that way. It was in his mind a protection. And I love the fact that she never once tried to get away from him. In her mind, holding her dad's hand was an assurance of protection assurance of love, and an assurance of caring and compassion. Lord, I pray today that we would have that same thought, that Lord, holding your hand is a place of protection. It's a place of guidance. It's a place of help and compassion. We know that we have this propensity, this drive, Lord, towards evil. Lord, we're constantly being bombarded from the world, the flesh, and the devil. We're constantly dealing with our need for security, self-esteem, and as well, Lord, significance. And the enemy uses the world with its pride, pleasure, and possession to try and satisfy that need. Then also, Lord, we're dealing with the agenda of evil, which, Lord, is closeted, in, of course, accusation, temptation, deception, but the agenda is simple. The enemy wants to rob, kill, and destroy. And Lord, we need to recognize that. We also need to pray for those that, Lord, have allied themselves with him. They said, you know what? We're going to follow the enemy. And they don't know that, Lord, right now, the enemy's agenda for them is the same to rob, kill, and destroy. We have multitudes of Hollywood stars that, Lord, have lost their lives 
tragically. They had the fame, they had the fortune, they had the popularity, they had everything the world wanted to give them, but ultimately they were destroyed by it. Either they took their own lives or their lives were taken from them in some tragic way. Lord, people need to see that. They need to see that following the enemy has the same agenda as he's trying to bring upon the people of God. He wants to rob, kill, and destroy. But you said that you came to give us life, and you came to give it to us abundantly. Lord, today, that's what we want to see happen in our life and in our situation. So, Father, thank you for that today. And, Lord, we're getting ready to do our second time of prayer, but we're going to do a song right now, and that is, Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And He will lift you up. Higher and higher and He will lift you up. Jesus is the way the Now, the reason I did that, of course, was preparatory to the next phase. We have four more wonderful scriptures on healing that we want to pray in this next segment. And then we're going to close it off with, of course, one more song. So here we have in Isaiah chapter 61, verse number one, Jesus, I thank you that in the community of Nazareth, you stood up and you proclaimed this particular scripture. Then you sat down and said, today, this scripture is fulfilled. Lord, here is Isaiah, 700 years before you even were in the synagogue at Nazareth, giving this wonderful scripture that you would illustrate in perfection, where you said, the sovereign Lord has, is upon me. And because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, he sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captive, and release those from darkness for the prisoners. Now, Father, we know that this speaks about how that Jesus would come and bring good news to the poor, healing the brokenhearted, freedom to those that are captive, and reminds us of your God's power working in our world today. Lord, when Jesus was working on this planet, when he was doing his ministry, signs and wonders and miracles were following him. And Lord, we saw these wonderful promises where he came to proclaim the good news to the poor. Jesus also said in his Sermon on the Mount, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall see God. Father, we pray today that, Lord, when we choose to follow you, that, Lord, we're going to see you. But, Lord, we ask that, Lord, today also as well, that, Father, this would be that moment that you would heal people. Lord, that those that are brokenhearted would right now be healed. Those that, Lord, right now are captive would be set free. Those that are in darkness, prisoners to darkness, that Lord, your light would come to them right now in the name of Jesus. Father, there are so many broken people, so many bound people, so many people, Lord, 
walking in blindness today. And Father, I want to pray a very practical application. Lord, I break right now the spiritual blindness that is upon the land. And I ask that, Lord, right now that you'd open people's eyes. One of the themes of John was this. They have the ability to see, but they don't see. Lord, would you right now open up their, ear, uh, their eyes? Secondly, Lord, we know that people are dealing with spiritual deafness. They have the ability to hear, but they're not able to hear. We open up their ears right now in the name of Jesus that they would be able, Lord, to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Lord, we pray for spiritual dementia, the unability, Lord, the inability, I should say, Lord, to not be able to discern or understand or even comprehend what is being presented. Lord, we pray today that that spiritual dementia would be broken. We also pray for hardness of heart. You said in the book of Ezekiel that, Lord, you would Turn that heart of stone into a heart of flesh. We know that, Lord, wherever our heart is, that is where our treasure is. And wherever our treasure is, that is where our heart is. People say today, follow your heart. No, don't follow your heart. Because your heart is deceitful and evil. And only God can bring a brand new heart. Lord, please do that today. Bring a brand new heart. To people. Break that bondage right now, Lord. Their hearts are broken and they need to be healed right now. Lord, there are people that right now are in darkness. I pray that you'll send your light. It was Ezra who said in Psalm 119, where he said this, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Father, today in the name of Jesus, please Bring that wonderful touch right now. Open up the eyes. Let them see that the word is a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their path. Lord, they don't have to walk in the darkness. In fact, it says that, Lord, the those that are in darkness will see a great light. And that's what we're praying for today, Lord. We're praying today that people will see that great light in the name of Jesus. Lord, also as well, in Isaiah 49, verse number 16, it says, I see I have engraved you on the palms of my hand. Your walls are ever before me. Isaiah 49, 16. This verse speaks of God's deep love and concern for us. It reminds us that we're always on his mind and that he cares for us deeply. Lord, that is such a great promise today that, Lord, in that spiritual sense, you have engraved our name on your hands. Lord, to know that you are constantly thinking about us, that, Lord, all we have to do is pray, and you are only a prayer away, that, Lord, you have love and compassion upon us right now. You're always thinking about us. And what is so amazing, Lord, is this. There are 8 billion people that live on this planet. And Father, you are thinking about every single one of us. We are not very far from your mind. And then there's that wonderful promise found in in Daniel 9.23 and Daniel 10.12 that basically say that before the request is out of our mouth, the answer is already on the way. I cannot fathom that, Lord, but I'm grateful for it. That, Lord, you are right now arranging circumstances, people, and situations that, Lord, are going to bring about the answer to prayer. Father, when I think of Abraham, for example, who was called by the Lord to offer his son Isaac on the Mount Moriah, little did Abraham know that on the other side of the mountain there was a ram looking for a thicket to stick his head in so at the proper moment he would be the sacrifice 
and that the Lord would provide. Father, that's what we're praying for. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. That means that, Lord, every need is going to be uh, met in the name of Jesus. You said that you supply every need. And Father, thank you that we are not very far. In fact, you are always thinking about us and desiring a relationship with us. And the beauty of prayer is this, Lord, it's a communication between you and me. Lord, you are excited you love when we pray because it's a time of communion. And what's really amazing to me, Lord, is this, that we are only the, are the only creatures on this planet that have that capability. The capability, Lord, that you can touch our lives and our situation. That, Father, we're not alone in this walk of life. Now, Lord, I love this next one. He says simply this, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, it will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you'll not be burned and the flames will not set you ablaze. I love this because, Lord, this verse offers assurance that you are with us even in the midst of trials and hardship. It reminds us of your protection, which is always available to us. Lord, Maybe, just maybe, Isaiah was thinking about how the nation of Israel was able to escape the armies and the intention of Pharaoh to destroy them and bring them back into captivity. Here they are, Pharaoh's army on one side, the sea, Red Sea on their back. And Moses says, you are about to see the salvation of our God. The wind blows from the east and blows the sea back in two heaps each side. And Moses and the nation of Israel were able to go across the Red Sea on dry ground. Lord, maybe he was also thinking about Joshua. When Joshua went into the land of Canaan, the Bible says that the Jordan River was in flood. And the Lord said, you're going to cross. And the means and methods of which it was going to happen was the priests would carry the Ark of the Covenant into the waters and they would basically back up a heap about five or ten miles up the road. Lord, think about that. Can you imagine being one of those priests? Maybe the two that had to walk first into the water and they're thinking, Joshua, are you right about this? And as soon as they touch, their sandals touch the water instantaneously, it dries up in front of them and they're able to walk across the Jordan River. And also as well, Joshua has rocks that are taken from the middle of the Jordan River and he has it put up on a monument, uh, 12 stones representing the 12 tribes, makes a monument. And when people are walking by that monument, by the Jordan River, it is a reminder of how that God gave them that wonderful promise that they were going to be able to walk through uh, even the floods of life. And then maybe, just maybe, Isaiah saw in the spiritual realm that he saw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Azariah, Mishael, and Hananiah. They had told the king, whose name was Nebuchadnezzar, I'm sorry, we can't bow to your image. We may, we're not going to bend, we're not going to bow, we may burn, but we're not going to do that. And then as they're thrown into the fiery furnace, Nebuchadnezzar looks into the fiery furnace and he sees the fourth man in the fire. Father, thank you for the fourth man in the fire. Thank you for Jesus Christ, who scholars tell us because of what Nebuchadnezzar said. He said that man looks like the sons of, of the gods. He's basically identifying who this individual is. Now, we, of course, in the New Testament know that it was Jesus Christ. But Lord, at the time, Nebuchadnezzar, 
didn't know that. But maybe, just maybe, Isaiah saw that when he said, Lord, when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned and the flames will not set you ablaze. That is so indicative, Lord, of what happened when Nebuchadnezzar had them walk out of the fiery furnace. There wasn't a hair singed on their head. And the beautiful thing is, Lord, they didn't even smell like smoke. Amazing. Lord, that's a wonderful promise for us today. Lord, when we feel like we're in the midst of the fire, let us recognize that, Lord, we're actually being purified. We're actually being refined. We're actually becoming more than gold. Lord, help us to understand that. The refining process, Lord, actually brings, of course, um, it takes care of the impurities. Years ago, Lord, I had the privilege of being able, Lord, to live in the community of Trail, B.C., which has the largest refinery in all of Canada. And the byproducts that came from the lead or from the zinc that they happened to be um, uh refining, brought platinum and gold and precious metals. Father, there's a lesson to learn. And that is that, Lord, there can be through the refining process, not only purification, but there can be tremendous, precious promises and benefits, Lord, through the refining process. Help us, Lord, to recognize that. Lord, help us to recognize that, Lord, in our trials, in our hardships, in our places, Lord, of, you know, circumstances, we're going to do a First Peter 5, 7. We're going to cast all our cares on you for you care for us. That's what we're going to do. Lastly, Lord, we're going to answer the invitation, which says, Jesus says, come unto me, all you that are laboring and late and burdened down. He says, learn of me for my yoke is, uh, he says, I'm gentle and humble. And he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Lord, if we're carrying burdens right now that are overwhelming us, we know that it wasn't you that put them on us. So, Lord, we're releasing them to you right now. Listen to this last wonderful promise. Isaiah 14, 4. I will heal their willingness and love them freely, for my anger has turned away from them. Lord, this is such a wonderful promise. It speaks of your unconditional love and your willingness to heal us when we stray from the path. It always reminds us that, Lord, you're there to forgive. Now, Lord, I love this next illustration. It's the illustration, Lord, of the prodigal son. Lord, thank you that even though we have not only dipped our foot in the pool of the world, we've gone for a swim. Lord, we have spent our time in waywardness, but right now we're making a choice to come back. We're choosing, Lord, to listen to you. Lord, I was listening to Dr. David Jeremiah last night, and he was talking about this very subject. And there I was driving down the road, and I said, Lord, I want to make sure that I am not wayward in any way again. I don't want to be like the prodigal who found himself you know, after he had spent all his money, he finds himself in a pig pen, a good Jewish boy in a pig pen. It must have shocked his audience when he told the story. And there he was eating the pig slop. And it actually looked good. Then he comes to himself and says, what am I doing? I am sitting here in a pig pen eating pig slop. And pig slop is pig slop, whether it's from a silver chalice or a tupper warm bowl. Lord, help us to recognize that the world is giving us pig slop, stuff that is not nutritious or good for us. It's processed food is what it is. Father, today in the name of Jesus, we ask that Lord, this would be the moment that Lord, we would have our aha moment. And that we would come back to you. And for those that, Lord, are in that position, the prodigals, the backsliders, Lord, the disenfranchised, would you bring them back to the house of the Lord today? Lord, we're sending out a call to the north, south, east, and west. We're asking that, Lord, right now, 
our children, our young people, our young adults, our young families, our families with teenagers, empty nesters and seniors. We're speaking to the demonic world, the inhuman forces. You are not holding them back anymore. Today, in the name of Jesus, they're coming from the city and town, village, hamlet, settlements, state territories, province, canon, and counties, wherever they live, and they're going to come back. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, whether they're in North America, South America, Africa, or Europe, the Asia or the islands of the ocean, Lord, they're coming back. Lord, we're speaking to those who love the word of God, who love to pray, who love to serve, who love to give, who love the moving of the Holy Spirit, who love the uh, worship of God, and Lord, love your house. We're praying for them today that they will come, that Lord, their waywardness would end, and that Lord, they would understand the beauty of holiness. Father, today in the name of Jesus, like the Father in heaven, Lord, we're looking for their return. That Father that day, even though his son smelled like pig slop and didn't smell so good, Father, in the name of Jesus, you had him throw his arms around him. You had him, Lord, kill the fatted calf. And then, Lord, they had a party. You put the ring on his finger and restored him. Lord, that's what we want to see happen today for those that we love. You are ready to forgive. You are ready to restore. We pray for that right now in Jesus' name. Send out that call. It was the call that was given in Revelation chapter 22. Jesus said, the spirit and the bride say, come. Those that are thirsty, come. All that are hungry, come. You will be filled. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone comes in, he says, I will come and heal them and restore them. Lord, that's where we are right now. That's the victory that we want to bring into this moment of prayer, that people will be healed. People will be restored because you are the faithful one. Faithful one, so unchanging, ageless one, you're my rock of peace, Lord of all, I depend on you, I call out to you. I want to thank you so much for joining me today for our time and place of prayer. And I want to just remind you today that God has a wonderful plan of healing for you today. And we took these wonderful scriptures, Isaiah 40, 29, Isaiah 58, 11, Isaiah 41, 13, Isaiah 61, 1. Isaiah 49, 16, Isaiah 43, 2, and Isaiah 14, 4. They are scriptures that you can stand upon today to receive your healing. Receive that healing right now in Jesus' name. Well, my name is Robert Dean Steele. And if you like what you have been seeing, then I encourage you to press the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also as well, if you happen to be in the greater Edmonton area, I would invite you to our in-person service tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. at Cornerstone Hall, number 6 Tache Street in St. Albert. Our doors open at 1045 and our service starts at 11 a.m. Thank you so very much for joining me today. Lord, thank you 
for your healing touch. Thank you that, Lord, we can take the scriptures that we have already mentioned today and apply them to our life situation. Bless this now, we pray in Jesus' name. Well, my name is Robert Dean Steele. Thank you so much for joining me today. And may the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.